Hi, I'm Leland Jung, a student Diego Rivera docent at City College of San Francisco. This video is the fifth video in our series on our college's Diego Rivera Pan American Unity Mural. In the series, we play detectives looking for clues in history and the mural for the surrealism movement and social revolution. This video focuses on the Tree of Life, a symbol used in Mexican culture and globally as a way to communicate between the earthly, underworld, and celestial realms. The complex central image in the mural represents the Tree of Life. Let's look at its base. We have a tree, a little Tree of Life. On the left side, Diego Rivera has painted a tree too, a liberty tree. We have another tree below it. On the opposite side of the mural, we have another tree too. Trees surround the central image. In prior videos, we discussed the similarities between Rivera's 1938 surrealism print called Communicating Vessels and the mural. The print was based on André Breton's Surrealism essay. Breton was a co-founder of the Surrealism movement. In 1940, just before he did the mural, Rivera painted the hands of Dr. Moore, a Surrealism painting. It's a painting that includes the Tree of Life. In the print, Look closely at the blood vessels and brain. There's a tree right in the center of the print. The blood vessel in the center is a tree trunk. In the painting, let's zoom into the trunk too. It looks like the print's trunk. Now, let's see how Rivera painted the roots of this tree. Now let's look at the print. Let's look at the lower blood vessels. They look like tree roots, just like the painting. So, Rivera painted the tree of life in the communicating vessels print. Let's look at the mural now. Now, look at the two sets of roots growing into the ground. We see the wooden sculpture emerging from the roots like a tree trunk. Going higher, we see the complex image of an Aztec goddess, Coatli Quay, and a Ford automobile stamping machine. The image also has twisting tube-like structures like a brain. Let's go to the print. The brain looks like tree branches. It looks like we're looking up through the canopy and into the sky and heavens. The time period of this print and the mural were tumultuous times. World War I, the Mexican Revolution, and the Great Depression had passed. World War II had just started. In 1940, the United States wasn't in the war yet. The print could be saying, even though we are in difficult times, if we delved deep inside our minds, we can find answers for a better world. Let's take a tour of the mural. Starting at the middle of the mural, where the north and the south of the North American continent meet. At the base, tree roots are growing into the ground. The wooden ram sculpture is connected to the roots like tree trunks. The goddess Coatli Quay's arm leads us to a diving plank. We see a woman diver, a world champion diver, Helen Kurilinkovich. She could do dives that men did that women could not do at that time. Notice the people looking up at her, like people looking up at tree canopies. She could be representing our aspirations and dreams. She was a once-in-a-generation athlete. She was also a licensed pilot and a Hollywood stunt person. 
she's pointing to the left side of the mural, where we see scenes of the ancient Aztecs. Our eyes follow the stone pillar downwards and lead us to an Aztec poet king and artisans working in assembly line fashion, directing us to the mural's center, to a scene of Diego Rivera painting a mural of liberators from the south and the north. Notice below there's a weaver. Her loom is pointing to a small tree with human-like characteristics. The tree has three branches, one pointing to the leaders of the south, another pointing to leaders of the north, and a third branch pointing to a montage of scenes from the movie The Battleship Potemkin. In a panel on the opposite side of the mural, we have a violent scene. Instead of liberators, we have fascist leaders. In Diego Rivera's print called Open Air School, we have farmers in the background working under oppressive conditions. They could be representing an oppressive past and present. In the foreground, we have students of all different ages studying with a school teacher. The teacher could be representing a path or connection from an oppressive past and present to a brighter future. On the upper left-hand corner, we have a guard with a rifle representing an opposing force. So we have a yin and yang situation between the guard and the school teacher. In the mural, the soldiers in the scene could represent the guard with the rifle in the open air school print. On the other side, the liberators could represent the teacher as a path or connection to a better future and to reach our aspirations. Notice there is an audience in the scene. They are looking past the liberators and looking at movie scenes of the battleship Potemkin movie. John Brown, the famous abolitionist, is also pointing to the movie scenes. In the movie, there's a scene of a woman carrying a child. In the opposite panel, notice the tree is pointing to a woman also holding or protecting a child. In the Battleship Potemkin movie, a woman with an injured child implores the government soldiers to stop. The movie is about sailors or soldiers joining with the people to oppose an oppressive government. Let's continue our tour. The implied line from the loom, tree, and John Brown directs us upward to the ram, the stamping machine, and to Helen Karolinkovich again. Her body directs us to look at the right side of the mural, the north side. More implied lines directs us to look downward to the center of the mural to meet the south. We have Charlie Chaplin pointing us to the center. The two men and the plank direct us to look at Frido Kahlo. Notice her hand is pointing to the battleship Potemkin scene of the woman and the child. Again, if you recall, in the battleship of Temkin, there's a woman holding a child. This is a classic 1927 Russian communist movie of soldiers joining with the people to oppose an oppressive government. The mural is saying the answer to this conflict between liberators and soldiers is to have the soldiers join forces with the people to fight and stop oppression. In the present time, this photo of police joining with Black Lives Matter protesters may have a similar message. 
This concludes our fifth video in our series of videos about the Diego Rivera Pan Unity mural. In this video, we looked at the tree of life and tried to find relationships between that symbol and the mural. In the next video, we'll try to show you something that's surprising. Stay tuned. I'm Leland Jung, a student, Diego Rivera docent at City College of San Francisco.